what we created died when it happened you chose the colors you never choose before while well, i kept on painting the walls you painted when i was yours Hey everybody, welcome to American Idol on Aired. I'm your host, Bennett Cheer, and today we have a contestant who has been on two seasons of the show. Let's get to know Hannah Alexandra. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. I am super excited for the podcast. You were on season 20 and 21 of American Idol. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see your time on the show. Give us that full introduction. I'm really stoked to get to know you. So my name is Hannah Alexandra. I'm from Miami, Florida. As you said, I auditioned for two seasons of American Idol. I'm an independent artist, and I'm also a dancer and choreographer. I have so much respect and admiration for dancers, by the way. I mean, I I could never dance to save my life. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It actually kind of started with loving the TV show, So You Think You Can Dance. I don't know if you ever watched that oh, show. or Crazy show. Absolutely love that show. I've watched it ever since I was little. I don't think I've missed the season. Like, I look up to all the dancers that have been on it. What kind of sparked the love for music because just performing in general sounds like a real passion of yours. Well, my mom put me into dance classes when I was really little. I was four years old. It was a conservatory and it was only ballet and flamenco at the time. But then I started to grow up and I started to venture out to different dance styles like contemporary and lyrical and tap. And at that school it was a conservatory. So it had a whole music program and the actual like academics itself, they required every single student, whether you like to do arts or not, to do the arts. So it was like mm. visual arts, you had to do a music class, you had to do a dance class, you had to be involved in every single art. And then after school program, which is a conservatory, you can go ahead and choose any instrument you'd like. So I started with the piano, just because I grew up in ballet, I loved classical music, I love the strings, I love the piano. So I was like, why not start? Started the piano and through there, I started noticing that I'd hum every time I'm playing the piano. I'd sing every time I'm playing the piano, I'm like, oh, I actually like this. And then I'd go home and I'd record on like those old iPods, like the Apple iPods. And I'd record like voice memos of me singing to Adele. My voice sounded like super weird because I was like seven, eight years old. I wish I could find recordings of them. I've tried so hard, but I can't. Um, and then through there, my love just started to spark for singing and music and then dance. Like everything just felt so connected and intertwined. And I just like went like, I went headfirst, dove into like every single different outlet, um, being so young, and I've never really stopped since then. Through all of this, were you a fan of American Idol watching the show as you were pursuing this as a child? I never really watched it on TV. I would only watch the reruns like on YouTube. So I was involved in watching the show, seeing the different contestants, but it was never like on a weekly basis. I did know, however, that at some point in my life, I wanted to audition for either American Idol or The Voice or any type of these singing shows just to get the experience because I always enjoyed watching them. Um, and the contestants are so different that it's like so cool to like step in those shoes and like try to do it yourself. You really don't realize like how big of a deal it is until you're standing in front of the judges. Like until you get there, it doesn't feel real. Like you go through all this long process, you meet so many people, you're having a great time, but it's like the moment you walk into the room, you're like, wow, like, I'm here like this is really happening it, it, it's a, it, it's a moment I can't even describe like that feeling that at least I felt when I walked into the room both times it's like wow I'm actually doing this like I'm stepping in the same shoes that all these other past contestants that I love and, and know of like I'm doing the same thing that they're doing so it, it's it's an indescribable feeling to say the least um, but it is a great feeling it's kind of like a whoa like this is my life right now <laughs> Let's start with season 20. I want to hear uh, how you got involved, if you were reached out to or if you tried out yourself. I was connected to Audrey Pinewright. She was working with the production and she was like, hey, I think you'd be a great fit to audition. Um, try it out. So I filled out the whole form to try out and then I did the, the Zoom auditions. I started with the first just like normal entry level audition and then they moved me to the second level which is like the second producers and then they moved me to the executives and it was like a four five hour long process I was sitting on the piano sweating because I was so like nervous and anxious to see all these new faces I've never seen before um it, it for me when it comes to performing I love to sing 
but it's always just like those nerves I'm like like those nerves I need to just like calm myself down and then once I start singing it's like okay I'm good I'm in the zone but it's just like that waiting for it makes me really nervous and so that's kind of how I felt throughout the process with the producers and then when they told me like hey you're going to the judges I was kind of just like wow like thank you like thank you was the only thing I could say because there's so many people when you're waiting on the waiting room that you see and they have their guitars and they're on mute, but you can tell that they're practicing or they're warming up and you just see so many faces. So to be chosen from all those faces to get this opportunity is a once in a lifetime thing. And so thankful was like all I could feel at that moment. And then from there, we set up everything and then I went to Austin, Texas. I feel like that must be crazy. I mean, I don't know if you remember any of the faces from like the little Zoom screens to actually meeting people. Probably not. But just just the fact that they bring it all to life. You know, they take you guys from your little bubbles and whatever city you come from and then put everyone in one place and, you know, film this TV actually, show. There is one person I remember seeing in the little bubbles. And then I saw her when I got there and then I met her. You remember Rachel, the trumpet? Yes, yeah. Rachel Chu. Yeah. We've had her on the podcast. Yeah. I saw her in that audition room and then I saw her like when I got to the actual audition city. I was like, oh my God, she looks so familiar. But I was like, I'm nervous to say hi because whatever, I'm a little closed off in the beginning. Um, but then we became friends. So that was pretty cool to, to see that online and, and in person. Yeah. Any other friends that you remember making in Austin? I remember Corey Curtis, Colby Cobb, Callie Morris was another one, Ellie Sheva, Ellie. But I was also with my mom. So the thing with going with my mom, I loved having her there, but it also made me feel like my mom's here. So like, I'm going to stick with my mom. So I feel like I kind of held myself back from making like really, really, really strong friendships just because I had my mom there, you know? It's like when you go alone, like I did this past season, I feel like I had more opportunity to talk to people because I had no one in my room with me. And it was kind of like, I feel like even better experience going on my own because I didn't have anybody to lean on. Like I had myself. And then I started to make more friends and I was like, wow, if I would have done this the first year, like, I feel like I would have created such strong bonds because this year, like I'm creating like the most beautiful friendships. And so that taught me that, like, even if you go with somebody, like you always just have to be open to like meeting new people and creating new experiences and just like learning different people's backgrounds, because you never know who you're going to become friends with and like you're going to make lifelong connections with, um, and so going back to that first season, um, those were the, the couple of people that I did talk to throughout the throughout the audition process. But I feel like I could have just like gotten to know them and so many other contestants a lot more. What do you remember about meeting the judges for the first time when you walked in that room and met them? I was so nervous. Like on the exterior, you probably couldn't tell. But on the inside, I was like, OMG, 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 OMG. Like, that's all I was going through my head. OMG, OMG. And I'm not, like, a crazy super fan of the judges, but I respect them so hard. Like, I respect their music. I respect their values. Like, their music is fire. And so I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this is – these are people who are big in the industry, who have this knowledge that I can learn from. Like, and they're going to be watching me sing. And they're going to be all ears, like, listening to me. So, one, it's an honor. And two, OMG, OMG, OMG. Like, this is happening. Um, And it kind of felt like you kind of, like, make this image of what you think everything's going to look like. And then you walk in and it all looks completely different. But at the same time, the same as what you thought. So it's kind of like a mix, like, okay, I'm fine. But also, like, wow, this is all so new. I don't know what's happening. Um, I know I was really nervous. I remember singing, I think it was a Sam Smith song. I believe it was Too Good at Goodbyes. Um, and my voice was really shaky. And I think it was just those nerves that I was letting myself overpower. And then I remember I got really good feedback from the judges. I remember Katie said that she felt like I had a strong voice, but that I just wasn't ready just yet. And I'm pretty sure it was because of the shakiness of my voice, because of my nerves. So I tried to work and have been working more on just like the breathing techniques while I'm singing. And then... Luke said I had a beautiful tone and so did Lionel. But at the end of the audition, I unfortunately didn't get a ticket. I think I got a yes from Luke, a no from Katie. And then Lionel was like on the fence, but he ended up saying that he thought I needed more experience. And so that was pretty much like a little summary of 
of my audition. Well, before we talk about the following year, there's so much that can happen in life and for an artist, so much in between the two seasons, right? Yeah. So after that audition, I was pretty bummed. You know, you go and like, you really want to do your best. And I feel like I just hadn't done my best. Like I had done so many performances before where I felt strong about. I sing all the time. I feel good. And it was just, I let those nerves get to me. And so I was obviously devastated by the outcome, but I love to sing. So I was like, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to be keep pushing, keep training. And so out of the blue, um, JP Sachs is an artist that I love and adore and yes. have listened to his music since his first song in 2016 or 2017. Um, he reaches out to me through TikTok because he has this challenge where he's like, write a verse to this little guitar strum. So I wrote like a four line or eight line verse and I submitted it. And he was like, the top person I pick will be able to write a song with me. And I didn't get chosen as the top person, but I got chosen as one of like his favorite verses. And he ended up posting me on his Instagram account. I was like, oh, wow. Like he posted me on his Instagram. And then he ended up following me on Instagram. And I was like, oh, wow. So he found me on TikTok, but he followed me on Instagram. So that was like the first shock for me. I remember laying down in bed, looking at my phone. He followed me. I text my mom right away. I'm like, oh my God, JP Sachs followed me. Because I was like, and still am a really big fan of his writing. I love his music. His style as an artist is just like so pure. And like, for me, it's so unique. And so I was like, okay. And then he DMs me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I text my mom like, oh my God, JP Sachs DMs me. We had a conversation. And then long story short, he's like, I'm having a show in Atlanta and I would love for you to be one of the openers. I already have an opening act, but I love your voice and would love to you, like love to add you in as another opener alongside her. And I was like, oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like I would love to perform in, like in your show. And the crazy story behind this is that I was actually already going to that Atlanta show. Like I already had backstage, back, well, I can't speak, backstage passes to meet him. Like I had done the full VIP experience to go watch this artist that I love. And I went from like being a true fan of this artist to singing on the same stage as him and opening for his show. And it was kind of just like a full circle moment where I was like, whoa, like literally anything can happen. It was something where it's like, I've been working so hard posting covers on Instagram, sharing my songs, sharing my music and my talent. And every time I reach one person, they're like, wow, you have a beautiful voice or wow, that helped me get through this. It's like, this feeling of like, wow, I'm doing good with my talent. Like I'm, I'm helping create change. And so for somebody who's so influential to me to see that spark in me and to, and to give me that chance to open for him um, was a really big deal for me. And so that really like gave me a big spark of like motivation and like work harder on my grind. Like I need to continue. I can't let these little setbacks like undermine the talent that I may have. Not everybody's going to enjoy my voice. Not everybody's going to enjoy my music. But as long as I'm having fun and I'm loving what I'm doing and I'm connecting with people, that's all that matters. And so from there, I continue to write. I continue to meet different writers. Um, and yeah, I decided to audition the next year for American Idol, although I was kind of like wary about it because I didn't know if they'd accept me again or if I had improved as much as like the judges had wanted me to improve, just a lot of different questions you get in your head before you're going to embark on something that you've already done. Um, but I decided to do it. And Audrey was a big part of that. She really was like, Hannah, like you can do this. Like there's no reason to hold yourself back. You can do it. And so I decided to do it again. So, yeah. Wow. Well, when I asked what happened in between, that was an incredible answer. What a, what a story about JP. And I think it goes to show that sometimes we really do have those people in our lives. You know, you have American Idol and Audrey was really a force for you when it comes to this show. And then outside of television, JP is someone that I feel like really pushed you and motivated you and made a big difference. And, you know, it's important to hear those stories about these like industry names or whatever, because as you know, independent artists are just, uh, you know, people who are aspiring artists that are looking to get into it. It's almost like, you know, you need to be reminded that 
there are people that are looking out for you that want to see you succeed, right? And so for you, uh, especially after that initial no, you had somebody that was in your corner that was like, you've got this, I believe in you, I see you. And the fact that he was one of your idols, that you already were going to see him, I feel like that's the coolest part of that story is that this was already planned for you to go watch him. And he's like, no, you need to be on that stage with me. I'm very much in somebody that believes that like everything happens for a reason. People are put into your life for a reason. And that was definitely one of those things like when you really want something or when you really are looking to achieve something, you put your mind to it like anything can happen. Like I'm just like a big believer in that. Like you just have to keep working, doing your thing, whether it's in silence, whether you're talking about it or not, just do it, put it into fruition. And from there, literally anything can happen. So yeah, that's like the biggest thing I've taken from that experience and doing idol again. It's just like, just do it. Like it's going to be scary, but like go ahead first. I still do things where like, I'm so scared and terrified to do them, but it's like, if I don't do it, I'm never going to, I'm never going to know what's going to happen. Right. So yeah. Wow. So when you walked onto the set for the second time, first of all, which city did you go to for season 21? I went to New Orleans. Okay. And what was the vibe like? I was feeling a lot more confident than the first season just because I had already kind of had the experience. And so I kind of had this, like, I would say a notch under my belt of like knowing how the process is going to be of like having really long days and like making sure I get a little snack in whenever because you never know when they're going to call you. And I even knew about like having to wear the same outfits every single day. And I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. So I went out and I bought two of the same exact top, two of the same exact bottom. So I kind of interchanged because, you know, you start to get a little sweaty and all that stuff. But the good thing was that it was all indoors for New Orleans. So you were never really hot. It was actually the vice versa. It was super, super cold. So I always found myself having to wear a sweater with a hot tea, warming up my voice, like that was um, a challenge for me because it was so, so cold in the venue that you really had to like fight to stay warm. And sometimes when you're filming, you're like in the behind the scenes and while they're doing somebody else's interview, like you just have to be sitting there and you can't have your sweater on. You can't have. So it was something where like you need to be like practicing your breathing to like make yourself warm. So I think that was like honestly the biggest challenge of um of being there for the second time was the climate. Like it was so cold in the venue and then you'd walk outside and it was hot, like super, super hot. It actually reminded me of Miami. Um, But in regards to nervousness, I was a lot more confident. Again, I went alone. So I got to meet so many crazy talented people. I met Iam, I met John Wayne, I met Jayla, um, Paul Delanius. There's just like so many names and faces that I can think of right now um amazing amazing people that it's like you get to sing with them you get to talk with them you become such like great friends in such little time it it feels very um very like like home like you don't feel like you're there for a competition you don't feel like you're even there to audition you start to forget that you're there to audition because you're just surrounded by so many people for so many hours and you're just talking and singing and having a good time and when it comes time for your audition at least for me I was like oh my God, it's time for my audition. Like, okay, I gotta get, I gotta get suited up and ready. Um, And so I was actually supposed to audition on the second day. There there was three days of auditions at my city and I was supposed to go midday on the second day. And then they slowly started to like push me back to like the end of day two. So I stayed all the way to the end of the day. And then at the last moment when they're about to take me in, they're like, we're going to switch you to tomorrow morning. Hmm. So I was like, Okay, so I like prepared the whole day, like getting myself ready. And then they told me you're gonna go tomorrow morning. So I'm like, okay, this is a good thing. Like I have more time to prepare and get ready. So I went back to the hotel, slept, woke up in the morning. And then I get there and I think I was like number 12 or 13. So I was like closer to the middle to the end of all the auditions for New Orleans. Um, And I walk in to the audition room And at that moment is when I start feeling nervous, obviously, because it's like the big moment that I've been waiting for all year since the season before. I said hi to the judges. They remembered me, which was already like, which was really humbling for me, like for them to remember me. 
Um, and I was just like really excited to show them all the growth that like I had made throughout this year and all the work I've been putting in to just strengthen my voice, strengthen my my craft, my piano skills. I sat on the piano and I did an Adele song. I think it was Love in the Dark. I think so. And I actually think it went very well for me. Um, I did notice my voice in the beginning notes a little shaky, but it started to get a lot stronger as I kept going on through the audition. And I stood up and I stood in front of them and they were all just like really quiet for a second and they looked at each other. And I was just standing there like, hey, what are they gonna tell me? And then Katie was like, well, do you think you'd come back for a third year? And I was like, I didn't know what to say in the moment. It was a, a question that I wasn't expecting. And I was just like, well, I'm not sure. Like, depends on the outcome of today. I'm like, I, I really didn't know what to say. I was just like, and then she was like, you have a powerful voice, but we just need you to be stronger. And it was it was this kind of like the same comment as the year before. So I was like, okay, I understand that. Like I started off very shaky and like, I get it. Like I, I know I could have been stronger. I know my piano could have definitely been stronger. And I think that's more so because at home you're comfortable in your spot, but then you go into a new space and you just have to adopt. And then Lionel and Luke just like, we're agreeing with her. Like, we just want you to be stronger. We know that you have something in you and you're just not showing it. And then they're like, we've seen all the other talent that's come in, in the past city and in New Orleans. And we just feel like you're not ready yet. I was like, okay. I, I said my, my thank yous with grace. And then I walked out and I didn't get a ticket for the second time. And I was, I didn't know how to feel. Like I was devastated because I was like, again, I've worked so hard for this second chance. I've been granted this opportunity to get this second chance. And I was like, man, like I've, I've blown it. And for a little bit, I was like, wow, like, I can't believe I blew my second chance. But then it was like, okay, well, am I going to like be super sad and stop singing for the rest of my life? Or am I going to like take this, sit with those comments and think, okay, analyze my performance. What did I do? What did I do that maybe like I need to work on a lot harder on? Okay, I need to work on my breathing. I need to make sure that I'm breathing when I'm singing. I need to make sure that like I'm emoting. I need to put myself in the most comfortable place when I'm singing and that's at home. That's in my room, that's by the piano. And I didn't do that in my audition. I went in very much thinking like, I just wanna like prove to them that I've grown so much. When in reality, like I have grown so much, but. I wasn't, I don't feel like I was like showing them my, my full me. It was more so of like, oh, I'm going in and I want them to see like how much I've improved. Not like I'm Hannah. This is what I can do. This is who I am. This is what I love. This is my passion. And so I think like the approach going into the audition, although like I was confident, I had like a goal obviously to show them I improved, but I think like that um, sense of like passion it was there, but I was so like focused on like, I want to show them my improvement that like, I, I forgot like to perform. Mm. But because it's like a TV show as well, it's kind of like, you're thinking about, oh, all the cameras around me. And then you're also thinking about, I want to do well for me. I want to do well for them. I want to do well for all the people at home who are waiting for me. Like it's so many different things that are running in your mind. And so it's like, you just start to sing and you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, that was basically my my second audition. That's how that went. It was a, a weird, a weird experience, but it was definitely one that I've grown from and I've learned a lot from and I've gotten to like, actually like think about and sit with. Um, and then moving forward, I've just been able to like, take everything I've learned from both of those experiences and just keep going. But with Palante is what they say in Spanish, like, voy palante. Like, I'm just going to keep going, keep going. Because um, at the end of the day, like, it's what I love to do. Like, you'll never, you don't know Hannah without, like, singing all the time, dancing all the time. Like, I'm always doing something in the arts. So I see everything as a good experience, whether, no matter how, how I felt at the moment, whether it was a bad feeling or a great feeling or a so-so feeling, like, it was an experience that's going to mold me and shape me into the person that, into my path. Everybody has their own little path. Some people get the yes right away. Some people takes a thousand no's before you get that one yes. And so I'm going to keep working on what I love, working through my passion. And what's for me is going to be for me. 
and it's going to be my path and that's that's how i'm going to see it <laughs> that was basically my my second audition do you think there'll be a third audition maybe <laughs> i i i don't want to say anything yet but yeah. you maybe maybe i'll be auditioning again maybe not i don't know question mark it's a mystery right i want to talk a little bit about your music because I was listening to your single Colors before this, and I really, really was moved by it. So I want you to tell me what went into writing that and where the idea came from and all of that. So Colors is based a little bit on my childhood. Um, it's based off of somebody being in a relationship where they're giving their most to their partner, and then their partner's just like ignoring them, their partner leaves them, and then they're like, oh my God, like I'm left, I've done so much for it like for you and I'm left with nothing. And so going into writing colors was actually a, a really funny story for me. My boyfriend and I were on the piano and I was like, give me a couple chords, play whatever chords you want. So he made like just a four chord chord progression. And then I was like, okay, give me a random word. And he looks around the room. He's like, paint. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put a 15 minute timer on and I'm gonna write a full song. So I just went on the piano, I started playing those chords, and I was just like writing, and I went on my notes, and I was like, oh, that sounds good. And I was like, okay, come over here, I'm going to show you. I sang the song, and I started crying, because I knew that I was like, I wrote something like from the heart. Like, I knew that this was going to be something really, really special to me. And then as I was singing, I was like, I wrote this about so-and-so in my childhood, and I was like, I need to, I need to, I need to make this a song. Like I need for the world to hear this because I know that so many other people are going to be able to relate to this, no matter what the story they want to apply to it is, they're going to be able to relate. And so from there, I was like, let's do it. I went to the studio. I obviously like tweaked a couple words. It's never completely a perfect song when you first write it. Um, but I knew that it moved me and I knew that it can move so many others. And so I was like, let's do it. I fixed it up a little bit, went to the studio, and I had the experience of going to a studio here in Miami. I'd never been one here before, and I got to work with a great producer. His name is Zach Darza. He has honestly just been the best person to work with here, and and we made the song, and we did the photo shoot, and everything has just been so, it's just felt so good and so, like, pure, just because the song means so much to me. Um, and it's received a lot of good feedback. So it, it feels great to to hear that a lot of people are enjoying the song. I can just tell from listening to the way you talk about your music, you have such a vision as an artist. There are so many people that love music and pursue music, but I, I sense that you you live and breathe it. And when you live and breathe something, you know, it's guaranteed to come through. And obviously art is subjective and people are going to listen to something and have their own opinions about it. But even hearing you explain that story, like I'm going to set a timer, I'm going to do this in 15 minutes. There's that steel that you have and there's the determination. You have it in you. You've got that thing that people want to hear. I can see it. That means a lot to hear from you. I think, um, I think just like my biggest goal is just to like, as long as I'm putting like my whole heart into the art I'm creating, and making it feel real to me, then I know it's going to read. I don't want, I don't, I don't feel like I want to ever put out anything that feels inauthentic or that feels like I'm just doing this because I, I want to make it big. Like I really trust in process and trust in like every single little thing is special and every single little thing is worth it and means something not only to me, but will make an impact on other people's lives. And again, even if it takes like a thousand years, I know that every single little piece of art that I'm making feels true to me and it feels wonderful and it makes it, it just fulfills me like music, art, dance, all of that. It just, it just makes me feel like a really, really great human. I think it is the most magical thing to hear a, a piece of, of, of a song and be able to connect with it and to be able to feel something that you've never felt before. Or to have feelings arise again that you're like, oh, wow, like music is so powerful. And I think having um, that gift to be able to write my own music and be a part of that powerful sense of it is a really, really great feeling. So it means a lot to hear that from you. Let's talk about that word a second. You said authentic. It's actually 
easier said than done to not worry about that word as an artist. Being in the industry, there's a lot of people that are going to tell you what to do and how to do it. And if you are just caring about being on the radio or being on a TV show or just having people look at you, you could just perform any song that's either written for you or someone can tell you this is how to write a pop song or hit song. And it might not necessarily be authentic, but for you, it sounds like it's so important to do something that's so true to yourself that it doesn't matter how long it takes for people to resonate with it. You know, and as you said, you've already gotten positive feedback, but it's like, you're going to do things your way and not necessarily if somebody tells you, oh, well, you have to fit into this box. You're Hannah Alexander. You're not anybody else but yourself. I think that's really important to think about too. Yeah. I think I've I've had a few experiences in the past with music where I've I've been told this is what you're going to sing and if you sign this and we accept you this is what you're going to have to do and it and if a couple turns in there don't feel like me then it, it just just doesn't feel worth it for me. Like even if that even if it's going to bring a little bit more fame or if it's going to launch me into the scene a little faster like that's just never been important to me. Like I'm so rooted in the fact that art, art is beauty. Like art is, is more than just being on the radio and more than just, just fame. Right. Yeah. Um, now to get to that level, of course, I would love that, that that's a dream and that's hopefully something that could happen. But um, my focus has always just been to create things that are true and feel feel good and feel like cozy to me and hoping that others will accept it and, and get that same feeling from it. Who inspires you? Who are some people in your life or artists that have come before you that inspire you to do what you do? People, I would say definitely my mom. My mom from ever since I can remember has been like my number one support, my grandma, my great grandma. All the women in my family have been the biggest support systems, whether it's taking me to classes, taking me to work when I didn't have a car, like literally I will drop everything for you and I will take you to go do things that you love to do because you love to do them and you, and, and you work hard. Like it, the women in my family were so tight knit and yeah, we fight and yeah, we bicker, but at the end of the day, we are so, I, I, I don't think I can, I can live without them um because they are my biggest support system so i look up to them a lot they've been through a lot of hardship and they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and work for what they want and and work for what they need to be able to to continue to grow and so i've learned a lot from them and then in regards to other artists that i, that I look up to i have to go back to jp just in the sense of like when I discovered him, he was a smaller artist. He was just stepping into the scene. Um, and I've just seen him grow in the past four or five years. I've been a genuine listener through Spotify. Like I've genuinely like listened to all the EPs, listened to the album. And it's like, I, I've just seen him grow. Other artists right now that I listen to that I really, really look up to, like music wise, probably Lizzie McAlpin is another one where she's just now like stepping into the limelight and she was known before, but now she's growing at such rate. that It's like, it's like, I'm like that little fan that was there from the beginning that's seeing her blossom. And it's like, whoa. And I think it was the same for me years ago with Billie Eilish. I had um, discovered Ocean Eyes through a dance project that I was doing. And then I got really hooked on her. And I was like that little fan. And then I saw her just like blossom. And then boom, it was like this huge star. So I think stories like that really do inspire me because all of those songs that they write are so like pure and the lyrics are so genuine and, and there's a connection and all those artists strive to make that connection with their, with their fans and with their audience. And so those are a couple artists that I look up to just in the sense of creating connections with, with their audience and other people. Mm -hmm. You're grounded in your roots and where you've come from and the people that raised you. And then in turn, when you look up to other artists, you think about where they came from, like with Billy and JP. It's like you remember when they started. I, I find that cool that you're all about where everything starts. I am like 100 percent grateful for all of the all the teachers in my life. That's like a one thing. Yes. that I think. Oh, my God. It's like, wow, like my teachers. 
I am so knowledgeable, but it's, but it's because of my teachers. Like they did such a good job in giving me the foundation and everything that I'm doing now. Like I really could not, can, wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for them. Like shout out to Miss Danella. Love you. Dance teacher. Love her. Um, like it, it's just uh, the teachers. It's the teachers. Those people that just love the art so much that they just want to share it with others and have them know and, and grow with it. The teachers are the best. They really are. Yeah. Um, well, I I want to hear you sing a little bit. Any song you want, because I know you've got the new single out or whatever you want to do, Hannah. I just I really want to hear your voice. I think I'm just going to sing um, just the chorus of my single. It's called Colors, as we spoke about. And OK, I'm going to start. You chose the pictures hanging on the wall. I chose to listen when all you do is talk. You said you loved me, I was falling on the floor. When you chose the color you never choose before. Cause I gave you rainbows, guess you wanted ashes. What we created died when it happened. You chose the colors you never choose before. While I kept on painting the walls you painted when I was yours. So yes for me. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, oh my gosh. No, you're, you're giving me the opportunity to sing my song. Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Your voice is so pleasing to the ear and the lyrics you write in the way that you choose to express how you feel about things and who you are as a person, who you are as an artist. I really admire all of it. Thank you, Bennett. Thank you so much. Hannah, where do we need to follow you on social media? Anything else that you want to plug? Obviously the single, any shows. So you all can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. They're both Hannah A. Alexandra. And my YouTube is also Hannah Alexandra. And soon, in maybe a week or so, I will be having special content coming out for my single colors on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. Cool. Well, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Idol and Aired Podcast. You can follow me at TV Music Guy. Make sure that you subscribe to American Idol and Aired if you have not already, wherever you are listening or on YouTube. Thanks so much, guys. And Hannah, thank you for being a part of American Idol Unaired. Thank you so much, Bennett.